Let's create a simple Voronoi attractor algorithm using a point in Rhino, where the Voronoi cells will become smaller the closer they are to a point. Let's begin again by setting up a Voronoi relationship. So we dropped a rectangular component on the canvas last time and said set one rectangle. I'm going to go with 50 and 50 again as my size. I'll just delete that surface. I am then going to create a Voronoi component, just the standard Voronoi here. And I'm going to create a populate 2D component. I'm going to plug the region into the populate 2D and the boundary of the Voronoi. And then the Voronoi will have be taking the points of the populate 2D. So in Rhino, I'm going to create a point which is going to serve as our attractor point. And I'm just going to place it somewhere in the midst of our Voronoi diagram, just there for now. In Grasshopper, I'm going to create a point container and I'm going to reference in our point from Rhino. So I'm going to set one point and select that point there. So as I mentioned, an attractor works based on distance. So let's measure the distance between this point and the center cells of each Voronoi um, cell that we've got. So I'm going to use a component called distance. And this is a really great component just for measuring the distance between points. So point A is going to be this collection, this list of points we've created here. And point B is just going to be our point. So what that will do if we create a panel is we create a series of number values that's basically a list telling me how far this point is to this point, this point to that point, this point to that point, on and on for 100 of those points. But what's interesting um, that we can leverage as the algorithmic knowledge here is that the points really close to the attractor point are all going to have really small values, and the points much further away are going to have really large values. So what we can do is we can leverage these values and create a relationship that could scale or change the size of these Voronoi cells. So I'm going to use a scale component. So this one here with the two circles, we've used it once before. And the geometry that I'm going to scale is these Voronoi cells. So I'm going to plug those cells in. We're plugging in 100 cells. By default, the scale component wants to scale from, you know, a center of over here. So you see it's just scaling the whole thing down based on this point. But we can use our center of scaling as this list of populate 2D points, because item 1 in our list of cells is related to item 1 in the list of population. So this point is related to the same cell in these two lists. So I'm going to plug my population into the center, and you'll see it straight away scales down every single cell from its center point. Now, what we can then do is change the scaling factor. Right now we've got an overall scaling factor of half, 0.5. But we can use this distance to kind of leverage a new type of scale. If I plug that in right now, the scale is going to be too big. You get this kind of big mess of geometry, and we don't want that. So I'm going to press Control z um, what we want to do is we want to mathematically adjust these numbers. So I'm going to use a component called multiplication, which is just this one here. And we're going to multiply all of these distance numbers by a really, really small value. I'm going to go with 0 0.010 um, as my number. And that'll just give me, you know, a really small value to multiply by. We can kind of see now, you know, the original distances were like 34, 30, sometimes, you know, much higher than that, sometimes much lower. And the new values are much smaller than that. So they're, you know, down within this kind of factor that we've already got on our scale. So if I go and plug this multiplication into that factor, we start to get a bit of a gradient. And in fact, I think this is probably too small a number slider. So I'm actually going to change it. I'm going to make it 0 0.020. And that'll give us a little bit more to, um, room to play with. And you can see now that I get this interesting kind of effect that's coming through based on this point. So if I go, I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to preview off all of these kind of items here. And you see we get this kind of sliding attractor. And we could change that slider to affect how that relationship's actually working. And as I move this point around, these um, this attractor pattern that we've created actually updates. So wherever the point is, the cells actually get incredibly small. So we could then go and set up a similar relationship for, say, a 3D Voronoi. I might delete this 2D Voronoi and delete this populate 2D. And we're going to replace it with a populate 3D. I'll delete the rectangle as well because we want to create a box now, as we remember. Um, so I'm going to create a box, right click, set one box, and I'm going to start it at zero. It's going to be 50 by 50 by 50 in the Z direction, like that. 
and that will become the region of our populate 3D. So all of our points sit within there. Then I'm going to create a Voronoi 3D, and the points will be these points here, and the box will be that. And we could then, you know, set this relationship up again, plug in the points to there, plug in the geometry cells to here, and plug those population points into the center. And we get, you know, once again, a, um, I'll preview that box up as well, a scale factor that gets smaller the closer you get to this point. Now, one issue that we start to get, if you kind of see over here, is you get some overlaps in this geometry because our um, our multiplication isn't really working in the way we want it to. The moment we scale above one in this attractor point scenario, we get some kind of like clashing effects, basically. So there's actually a much more elegant way of setting up attractor points inside of Grasshopper, and it's with something called the um, remap component. So the remap component is a really great way at squishing down um, the number values that we have in a certain relationship. I'm just going to delete this multiplication component for now. And we're going to focus on what's coming out of distance. So right now, um, we've got a list of values in distance, and I'm not entirely sure what they range between. It looks like it's between 10 and about 60. And what we want to do is we want to squish those values down so they sit within a factor of like, I don't know, maybe 0.2 to 1. We don't want anything to be greater than 1 when we're scaling using this attractor relationship that we're setting up. So I'm going to figure out what this range is. We can figure out the range of a component by going to maths, domain and clicking on the bounds component and that'll tell us the minimum and maximum values or the domain of a series of numbers that we have or a list of numbers. So I'm going to drop that under the canvas. Out of our numbers component I'm going to plug in into numbers here and I'm going to plug this into the panel and you'll see that our range of values they sit between 6 and 66. Okay. So we want to squish this domain down. So the smallest number is, say, a 0 0.2, and the largest number is a 1. So it's almost like taking this big timeline of numbers, they sit on a timeline, squishing them right down, so it's 0 0.2 to 1. We can do that with the remap component. So it's called remap numbers. You can find it under domain, again, just here. Um, and the remap numbers has three inputs. It has the series of values we want to remap. Those would be our distances. We want to remap that list of distances and squish them down. It has a source domain. So that's asking for the domain of the current values that we have, which is this. We've already got this. And then it's asking for a target domain. So by default, it's set to 0 to 1. And we're going to affect that in a second. I'm just going to plug in a few things to get us started. So I'll delete this panel. We're going to plug in our values that we want to remap. Oops, values, so from distance. We're going to plug in our source domain, which is, you know, the current domain or range of these values. And then we're going to create a custom target domain. So to create a custom target domain, we can go to construct domain. And we can basically tell the domain start, where we want the lowest number to be, and what the domain end, where we want the highest number to be. So I'm going to make the domain start 0.20, because I want that extra decimal place. I'm going to plug that into domain start. And the domain, domain end is 1. I'm just going to add a number slider that's 1.00 as well, though. And I'm going to plug that into domain end. And then I'm going to plug this new domain we've created to be our target domain. So now what we'll have is we'll have basically these values remapped so they're squished down to be, you know, between... Uh, 0 0.2 and 1. So if we look at this distance thing, look at number 8. Number 8 is our highest value. So remember the highest value in this domain was 66.37. So if I look at number 8, that is 66.37. That's being remapped to a value of 1 because the highest point of our new domain is going to be 1. So what that means for this is if you have a really small value near the point, it's values are going to be remapped to approximately 0.2. And you have, if you have a really large value, the furthest point away from this attractor point we've created, it's going to be remapped to a value of 1. So I'm going to plug in these map values to the factor, and you'll see we get a really elegant kind of relationship. We no longer have that overlap effect that we had previously by using this remap values component.